A short while ago Oriflame has released an inspirational video, Igniting Friendships. It reminds us of the strengths we have when standing together and that we can overcome any odds if we stay connected. Oriflamians from all over the world shared their footage for this video, but we also needed a very powerful song to highlight the message. My name is Alexander Gubanov, and today I'm happy to present an interview with We Are Dreamers, a fantastic band of two talented artists who have created Astro, a powerful song that made our video come together at last. So please welcome Axel and Christopher and enjoy the interview. So would you please tell me about yourselves now? Uh, let's start with Axel because I can actually see him. My name is Axel Carlsen and um... I'm 30 years old and I live in the south of Sweden in Helsingborg and it's also the uh, the hometown of uh, Christopher as well. So this is where the, the story started for us both. And I've lived there pretty much all my life since I was like five years old. And um, at the moment I've been, I live in Valleåkre, which is sort of 20 minutes outside Helsingborg in the countryside, which is really nice in this sort of ideal, beautiful valley. Yeah, what I, I uh, study architecture um, in the fourth year out of fourth out of five years. Uh, so that takes up a lot of my time. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, I, uh, I love uh, creating stuff. It's all about, you know, uh, not just architecture, but it's yeah, music. Great. Uh, what about you, Christopher? Yes. So um, I'm also 30 years old. I, I live in Stockholm with my beautiful dog, Lily. Um, I work as a personal trainer and have for uh, four years. Um, I love strength training, weight training in general. So that's that's pretty much what I do uh, when I don't do music. I I train myself. I train people. Um, yeah. You know, you live here in Sweden, both of you. So how do you you know spend your times together, maybe? And how often does it happen? Are you often apart? Are you often uh, together? Since the whole pandemic started, I would say that we haven't really seen each other that much. Maybe one, once or twice a year. Um, but that's also due to the fact that we we both have um, a lot on our plates. We're both working. Uh, I have my dog to attend to. He has his house, his own house with his girlfriend. So, um, and, and the, the drive between Stockholm and Helsingborg, it's like five, six hours. So it's... It's kind of a, a project just to to see each other. So we we basically calling each other each and every day. And since we've been working with the music, we we just keep in touch all the time. So it doesn't <clears throat> it doesn't really matter, I think. So most of the time we're talking about music, but we're also you know sort of checking up on each other that we're how life is going and supporting each other and some hardships that's been actually this this um, this past year has had some some really tough tough things happening to us both and um so basically we're, we're keeping in touch on a weekly basis through the music and sometimes on a daily basis but we have common in uh, friends in common and uh we uh, we see each other pretty much every year at least twice usually at least twice now it's been less often but um so yeah and the theme of our video, the theme of the event when we ran this video through was igniting friendships. And uh, you just told uh, us that uh, you too are friends. So how did it all start with you? What ignited your friendship? Yes, so I think I was about uh, 12 years old. I, um, I went to a music school. And there's this new kid in class called Martin, uh, and we immediately hit it off, became best friends. Um, and we decided that we want to start a band, our very first band. So I was playing guitar. Uh, Martin also was playing the guitar. Um, I asked him if he had any friends to, to join the band, and he, he, um, he had another friend called Christian, which, which was his um, childhood friend. And we... <laughs> we got him, him into to playing the bass, even though he could he he have never played any instruments before. But we're like, pick up the bass, we need you. Um, <laughs> and we we asked him if he knew any drummer. And another kid has just started in his, his class, and that was Axel. Maybe not just started, but but they they went to a different school mm -hmm. together. We met up at a re rehearsal place. Um, here in Helsingborg, and we we started playing. 
And I had basically just started playing drums back then as well. As I think it was like 13 years old, and I played like a six months or something like that. So we, we were like, <laughs> most of us were complete rookies, and Christopher was the only one who had played guitar for a long time. He was really the leader of the band. But that's how we met, and uh, we basically started, uh, yeah, we, we had this band for uh, quite some years, actually. I think we had it for like five years and then I left the band actually for a different project and Christopher played in another band uh, then as well a, a, a much heavier band but then we we uh, united once again a couple of years after that um, in a project and uh, we've been you know creating ever since so it's been a, a long period with a, a short break you could you say. basically realized a lot of teenagers dream of uh, you know starting a garage band and yeah me and Christopher was also sort of um we, I guess we realized down the road that we had a very, very similar taste. I mean, we had grown up with, with uh, grown into the same kind of music taste from our, um, from, from the first band and, and after that as well. But um, so, so we just immediately clicked when it came both, uh, you know, as a friendship, but also when it came to, to music. Um, and a very, very interesting thing uh, happened actually, um, or we, we found out a very interesting thing. Uh, when our dads met for the first time, I think it was like when uh, a couple of years into the first band, when we were, when we were young, I was going to uh, chill at Christopher's place and our dads met and they recognized each other. And it was so uh, weird. They actually um, they, they uh, found out by just sort of uh, talking to each other that we lived next to each other when we were one years old. The first year of our lives yeah we were neighbors it was so weird to find this out so my dad basically he had sort of uh, he drove Christopher's dad to the hospital when he had cut himself really badly one time and you know the uh, yeah we lived next door the first year of our lives and then we no but so there's been... something out of uh, you know something out of a movie <laughs> yeah it was it was destiny <laughs> It was crazy. It was really, really crazy, and uh, sort of, yeah, uh, we were made to create music together. So now, is it uh, just two of you, or do you have uh, some other members of the band? It's just the two of us. What's the role distribution? Um, I play most of the instruments, and I sing. Uh, Axel plays drums and is the lyrical genius. Yeah, and, and many of the melodies has become my also. We're 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 definitely teaming it together. But I have a, a thing for quick getting into melodies and and lyrics. And Christopher is really really good with the technical uh, side. He is really good. He he um he's the engineer, sort of the the producer of the uh, the digital technicalities, you could say. Um, and I play the drums, so I do the the playing of the drums, which is. A big part of it itself but uh yeah yeah so you basically what you do is you record uh, each instrument separately and then you kind of bring it all together in uh, montage or exactly mm. so we, we're doing everything ourselves except for the the mixing of the music and actually also it's the first time that i've i i actually for this ep i did the artwork as well I mean, this whole project has been amazing because we've really grown. We've sort of had to deal with and, and solve everything ourselves, including the, the vocals were not intended for... for uh, it was not intended that Chris was going to do them. Just as Axel said, um, just by me doing the demo and, and uh, practicing at home, I was, I was able to, to actually do the vocals because I got better. Crazy thing, my car is actually <laughs> the best place to practice my singing. Um, so I've been practicing a ton in my car, no joke. <laughs> okay, that's pretty pretty fun. But uh, do you practice while you drive or do you park it somewhere? Because, you know, it uh, can get dangerous. <laughs> Honestly, mostly of my singing has been while driving. <laughs> okay. How does it work having a friend as your project uh, company? Companion, so to speak. So, like in the music band, sometimes maybe you have a clash of opinions of, of like how does it work. I, I've never actually did music, so I don't know how the creative process. No, you're absolutely right. You're you're absolutely right. It's always with that. Um, it's the same as any other creative process. There is going to be uh, discord, 
but we uh, we've never ever had any kind of like hard argument about regarding any kind of decision. We've always had sort of a really we've always had the ability to let go of our ego and and just really listen to the other one's ideas and really quickly we we often figure out which one has the more uh the best idea for the song basically and we we always have the the uh, focus is always on the greater good for the song there's no ego involved it's nice to be friends because we we have a um a long background as well with uh things to sort of uh, re- enrich the the um, the music uh, i think in many ways that there's a, a a history to it um and it just makes the the collaboration richer just as Axel said, I, we haven't really had that much difficulties. Uh, we've always had to sh- share a uh, synced vision and always had the, the same goal in mind. That's very good. And I think that's what, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, since we're doing this for Flavians, we can take home as well that uh, maybe sometimes you need to let go of some stuff and some details and, uh, you know, sacrifice your ego for, you know, for the future of your song of your project, mm. of uh, what you're doing. I have this question about the name of your band. How did it happen? Who came up with this? This song, Astro, like w- when the music and the production is done, we just add uh, like a lyric uh, that that's just in work. Uh, it's not the actual lyric that we're going to have. It's just some lyric we write up on the spot to create the melody. And so yeah, like, we a, are, like a sketch, basically. Yeah, a sketch. And like We Are Dreamers was the first a sentence that came to mind and that was actually the the first the first sentence in the song where we now are singing sleeping giants we used to sing we are dreamers so your first song's first draft line became the name of your band yes like it really stuck with us because the the topics we're singing about is generally really you know, very uh, big topics and, and serious topics, and they're about sort of the world and humanity. And uh, sometimes it's, uh, there is a hint of dreaming about it, uh, how to make it better. And you know, um, it's also a nice hint to sort of John Lennon's "Imagine" uh, song. Imagine uh, you may say, "Call me." You may say, "I'm a dreamer," um, and you know what that song is about is also something that we um stand for a lot and i just just felt really fitting to our uh the sound of our music and it's also a little bit you know we're um humans we have the capacity to not only dream but to to manifest you know dreams into reality and we think that's something that's unique about humanity so it just felt in line with what we sing about and just everything just synced with that with that with those words that name your dreamers, what do you dream about right now? Or, you know, what is your biggest dream maybe in uh, in life? I would say that the biggest dream we have right now um, with our music, uh, I've always had the dream to have my song in a, a, a big picture. Um, so a, a huge dream would be to to have the song in in sync at the ending of a, of a great movie or... Uh, a big documentary or so it's like a hollywood blockbuster and at the end you're like sleeping giant exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly the new avengers no but uh yeah definitely that goes the same uh, it goes the same for me to, to hear the music in in a movie context in some way uh would be amazing and also i mean of course there's always the dream for a band to stand uh, in front of a big audience and and uh, just experience the music together with people. That's that's the dream. But we we haven't actually had that as a goal. But it's definitely a dream. I don't know about uh, Hollywood production using your song, but uh, your song is now featured in uh, in the video. Yes. So what do you think? Uh, was it good? Was it bad? Uh, like I want your opinion as a person, uh, like uh, as people who are not affiliated with. Uh, with Oriflame. I, w- I was actually uh, surprised of how moved I got by it. Mm. Um, I think I was on my way to work or uh, on my way home from work and I got the link from Elena and I watched it and I really got I got goosebumps. I got moved and um, yeah, it was really heartwarming. Same for me. It was uh, 
it's surreal actually i sat in the couch downstairs just sort of looked at it started looking at it, it was like immediately it was like a really you know a kind of surreal feeling that someone's using our music in a context like this and it was at the perfect context you know um what the song is about and the message in the video was just so synced i had goosebumps many times during the the video actually well that's that's great that's very pleasant to hear thank you let's uh, talk a bit about astro itself so you said it uh, aligns very nicely with the themes in the video what other themes do you think what, what did you want to like how did you write it you wanted to create something specifically you had some ideas that you wanted to lay down on paper and then translate it to the song or did it just you know happen and it reflects more of your subconscious feelings the thing is all the all the lyrics are free to interpret any way you want so we didn't really have that uh, clear narrating as in a lot of uh, pop music uh, so i just i just felt that it was a really good um uh, interpretation from from oriflame and uh, the, the lyrics can, can say a lot mm, for sure i mean if, when i the lyrics when i wrote them was basically the 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 feeling of the song was always this really um it's it's the opening of the ep and it had this sort of tone of positive emotion to it and i just wanted to illustrate that in some more abstract way so the lyrics are not very it's about basically sort of uh, celebrating human endeavor and our inner power and capacity to create and achieve extraordinary feats. Uh, it's about our drive to explore um, the unexplored frontiers of our universe and the universe that exists within each and every one of us. And um, so that's, a you know, it's it has to do a lot with how to also go through a crisis in some way, I guess. That's sort of the inner drive and the, the power of humanity. And that's also what the video from Oriflame was about. So um, it was funny that they really worked well together. Do you have some maybe other songs that you've written and maybe recorded, but you haven't released them yet? Do you plan to release them or? Uh, no, we've uh, re released stuff before uh, on Spotify. And I, as actual mentioned, I played in a <laughs> death metal band actually for uh, eight years. Um, so I, I've, I've released a lot of stuff before, but this is like the the project we, we really care about. This is what we want to um, achieve greatness with. Like all the yeah. other projects has been a little bit trial and error. This is uh, this is the one, so to speak. Well, but that didn't sound like death metal at all. So <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's big. It has a very. It has a rock. A touch to it. It, it. The first song here, Astro, is very uh, orchestral as well. But the, the and the other two uh, songs are all have a lot of orchestral elements to them as well. But I think the next song that we're going to release, we have two more songs that we're going to release for the CP. And the next song is going to be more of the rockier one, I think, generally throughout the yeah, song. Yeah, it's, it's the heaviest one. Mm. So uh, I want to discuss a bit something else. At Earthling, we have this mantra. Uh, so to speak we say that we never give up so it's really important for us to you know keep going keep striving to achieve your dream keep uh, you know pushing forward even you know if the whole world is against you which, which it is not thankfully but mm. do you have some like moment that you felt like oh it's goal it's all going to hell I, I, we're not going to make it and how did you persevere through this moment yeah, but it's like we we never set out to conquer the world with our music or to be the next uh, Foo Fighters or or whatever. So um, our goal has always just been to do music that we love. With that said, um, we we never thought that we were going to fail because how how can we fail doing what we love? As long as we keep doing our music, we have succeeded tougher moments through this process has maybe been the we didn't know if we were gonna find a person that we could deliver the the vocals was a big part and sort of it was amazing to just be able to solve it with ourselves that that Christopher could pull that off eventually it it, it, it had to do with time uh, this this project has been going on for many years now actually um, and uh, 
you know, it was uh, when when he eventually could could pull that off. It was, I mean, that was a great moment for me. I was just so relieved that we could actually finish. <laughs> yeah, and, we were uh, finally self sufficient. So, I have this question. So at Oriflame, we have this thing called Oriflame moments, and it's. Uh, special, you know, events that uh, we try to make happen in each other's life. So, for example, uh, I have a moment like this uh, when uh, I celebrated my birthday last year. I was, I think I was actually on parental leave or it was a holiday of some sort, so, or it was uh, a weekend. Doesn't matter, I wasn't working, I was uh, walking out with my family, so I didn't expect anything, you know, to happen. Uh, suddenly I get a call from uh, our colleague Christina who works uh, with us and uh, with Elena and with Jenny and everyone else and she's like where are you are you at home I'm like no I'm outside with my family she's like hold on stay where you are I, I'm going to catch you and she came in on the bike wearing this like trench coat and uh, well obviously in a helmet and uh, she brought me presents and she brought me flowers and uh, you know she got to speak with my wife she got to say hello to my kids and it was very very touching and nice that uh, you know these guys went the extra mile to make this happen so and this is uh, the moments that we try to cultivate and we cherish very very much in this company so do you have any moments that you've created for each other not just, uh, maybe we've talked about a lot about Astro and about uh, We Are Dreamers band, maybe just in your friendship outside of this musical career. Mm. I have one, I have one, one a very powerful moment. Um, it was actually regarding Martin, yeah, the guy we talked about in the beginning of the interview who uh, went in the same class as uh, Christopher and who was uh, one of the members of our first band. When he got married, we... Uh, we surprised him with uh, it was the first guy in our uh, you know friendship uh, group that uh, got married, and uh, we arranged in secret um, a bachelor party for him. And he's a really he's a he's a really big nerd, <laughs> so we made this really uh, big event with our uh, a group of friends with like maybe eight or ten people, and we. Uh, we got together and uh, with the, like costumes and everything and just made it as nerdy as we possibly could and set up a whole storyline for him with events, you know, uh, going basically like a video game, but in real life. It was really fun. And uh, so uh, what I remember from that is, you know, um, being friends, f friends for so many years, he had this, there was a moment after the, towards the end of it, where he was just expressing his gratitude and I've never seen him. Uh, in that mode, it was just uh, was something that I am always going to remember how he was just amazed of the, the, the love and friendship. That, so do you have a similar moment, uh, Christopher, or is it uh, basically the same one for you? Um, I would say speaking of friendship, it, it's, it's, it's probably much the same. M me and Axel uh, dis discussed it yesterday. Maybe it's not an overflame moment, but we both really had a, a touching and a heartwarming moment when we saw the video the first time. Well, that, that is an Oriflame moment because, you know, yeah, the video yeah. comes from Oriflame, so... <laughs> Are you looking forward to many, uh, I, I mean, uh, to some more Oriflame moments? Are you open to another rounds of collaboration or something? I think for me it depends a little bit on the company approaching us. I, I, when, when you approached us, I went in and, and I read about you because, you know, it's important that you don't sort of align yourself with an oil corporation or something like that. and. <laughs> So, but I was so super happy that I, I found out that you were uh, very ethical and, and all, all of that. And I was just, yeah, that, that's great. I mean, um, that's something that we can definitely work with. So it's, it's bas I think it's about uh, who that will be, but um, we're absolutely open to collaboration and, and looking forward if, to, to more opportunities like this. Great, do, do you have anything to add to this, Christopher? Now I would say, as long as we share the same values, which which you did, um, it's it's good to go. This was this, this was like the, the perfect match. I have this. Maybe it's a bit of a weird question for you, but still. Um, so the song Astra is so filled with hope, and it's very uplifting, so to speak. And uh, this is actually not something that I see often nowadays. It's uh, like in uh, popular media. The trend is to show some kind of hopeless situations often and uh, not necessarily uplifting ones. 
So, and you're very young and uh, you're an emerging artist, so to say. So, uh, do you feel that uh, like uh, this is like hope is something that you will continue to strive for in your works? Is it a theme that you want to explore further? And uh, yeah, do you actually feel this hope for the future yourself? Well, basically, the times we're uh, living in and the, the, our generation of young adults are facing these enormous problems. I believe that as humans, we have a more a bigger capacity than we understand. And uh, partly we've seen this in the pandemic, you know, when we as when we get together and unite there's, I guess, no limit to what we can achieve. And it's partly why we're not achieving some of the things that are, we want to achieve now is there's too much of, too much division. So we, um, that's a big thing for us to sort of sing about the unification of how we need to join. We need to sort of stand together in many, many of the hard things going on. And uh, it is hard because we have different countries and different wills and, you know, big corporations influencing the politics and stuff like that. So it is hard to get the the general message across and for people to really feel um, or, or to politically for things to really take action and, and for things to really happen. But it's um, that's why we're dreamers. We're dreaming that eventually this will actually come to pass and... Um, maybe a music will play a little bit uh, a part of that uh, process <laughs> for some people um, but that's just a dream so what do you have any other plans so do you have any upcoming songs that we should be looking forward to and what are their you know so Astro is about hope what uh, what will be the new songs themes Axel you wrote the lyrics you start off <laughs> No, you know it as well, my friend. But uh, it's it's um, the perspective of the song is uh, the lyrics are basically um, it's sung from a child's perspective. Uh, a child is singing to uh, his mother uh, or her mother or, or uh, her father regarding um, that she saw children marching down the street with signs in their hands um, saying humanity has gone astray. And she's asking these questions to her uh, mom and dad about uh, the uh, the future. And um, there's the the song is about the, f the the fear and the anxiety of the younger generation for the future. Is there going to be a world for them to live in or inhabit? How how is it going to end? Will there come uh, a morning after night? And it's um, the perspective is also from a child's fear of the night and the darkness. Will there ever be a morning? And uh, the answering voice is the the parent saying, uh, "It's always it's kind of like a feeling of that the younger generation has been failed by the the grown ups." So, in, in this song, it's the 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 grown up is singing to the child that, um, sort of taking that role that we need to have as grown ups or take as grown ups. Um, we need to lead. We need to take responsibility. But so basically, the 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 ending of the song is the the parent is singing that there will always come a morning that the sun will always rise, um, after after night comes the dawn. Um, it's very hopeful because we need hope, we need hope in these times, and uh, it's so easy to get you know crushed by the news of the uh, and and things going on it's all about negativity and and we need to focus on what what's going on with the, with the what's positive right now and um so i think it, we need to have feel hope otherwise we're just going to collapse into darkness and uh I, people need hope for for change to come an ambitious plan to invite greta thunberg and uh, record her maybe or sample her voice as you say there is there is a gap in the song that can be uh, that we, yeah be filled for that with a voice with her voice and we're we're I think we should do that. We have this project going on that we in the, for the upcoming new year we have collected a lot of wishes from all employees, brand partners, uh, you know, just uh, people who follow Reflame on social media channels, and uh, we put uh, most of these wishes in one video and uh, shared this with the whole world. 
So my question to you is, uh, what do you wish for to everyone uh, in 2022? I wish for people that in these times that we're living in, uh, of partly great division in, in many regards, uh, there's a lot of things going on in many countries when it comes to uh, division of people. I just wish for people to see the love and uh, and the, the the friendships that they have and to keep um, the bonds strong and not to let uh, minor things that might come in between people to stand in the way of their friendship and uh, just hope for people to to stay connected yeah I, I, w I would say for the world to try to stay united I would say Really nice talking to you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys, for having us. Yeah, we're so grateful. Merry Christmas and have a great New Year and uh, a great uh, continued year. Thank you. Good year. <laughs>